get you down. You know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Akuna Matata ain't no passing craze. Hello, welcome, my friends. You are joined by my lovely wife. I'm Andrea. And this is the Disney Plus S podcast, a podcast dedicated to the Disney Plus streaming service. We cover the news, we cover the rumors, we cover all the latest addings of, of movies coming to the Disney Plus streaming platform. But today, you're not getting a, a animated movie review. We normally do that. We've been watching them all in chronological order. Today is a very special show because... The big question, Raya and the last Raya and the Last Dragon, is it worth it? And uh, Andrea and I just got done watching it last night. Yesterday was the very first day it premiered, and the big question is, is it worth it? But before we get into that question, (laughs) because it is thirty dollars until. June, like once it once June hits, then it's free on Disney Plus. Yeah. So what people really want to know is, should I pay the thirty dollars, or is it just kind of so so, and I should wait until June or later? Exactly. Let's get into our initial reactions. Jay, this movie was fantastic. It was great. I mean, we're gonna get into. We're gonna try and do this episode spoiler free, so we don't ruin it for anybody. Um. But initial reaction, I really enjoyed this movie. It had humor. Uh, it got me in the feels. Um, great, well thought out story. Really good, like well rounded characters. Big thumbs up for me all the way around. Andrea, I'm going to have to completely agree with you because I loved this movie. This was a movie that during it i just had fun watching and afterwards i'm like i learned stuff there's morals here there's there's good relevant morals to today's society here i think and um one of the things i really appreciate about raya and the last dragon is and i didn't even realize it until the end i'm like wait the cast was mostly females there was a few male side characters, but it wasn't a the the main characters in this. There were probably three three main characters, and they're all female. Yeah, it was wonderful, and I didn't even it didn't hurt the story. And I didn't even realize it to the end. So this to me almost felt monumental. Where there's some movies like Frozen, where it's like okay, they're princesses and they do all this, and it's very pointed. But this feels like. To me, it felt almost like a normal gender neutral movie that just felt like a great movie that had almost an all female cast. Yeah, which which is rare. Usually when they they have a cast headed up by by women, it's very pointed towards a female audience. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't necessarily this was just a really good story pointed at everybody and yeah. everyone could enjoy it and it didn't feel overhanded or forced or anything it was yeah, just it really really yeah. nice so for those who are like raya and the last dragon what is this well let's and this we're going to definitely not spoil a thing but i'm going to tell you about the story the premise the premise yeah. and based on what's already out there in on the, the trailer yeah. yeah so the movie is set in Asia. It kind of looks like Thailand or yeah. Vietnam or, or it's kind of that Southeast Asia, uh, just based on the geography that we're seeing. And I, I don't know the time frame here. Definitely maybe feels mid-century, maybe 1500s. I don't know that 1600s. it fits within time because it's not. It's not set. They're not like we're in Vietnam right now. Yeah. It's it. It looks like that kind of landscape, but it's kind of this fantasy world. That's uh, these five countries that are centered around this river slash lake that looks like a dragon. Yeah. And so each 
country is named after a part of the dragon. Tail versus spine, horn, talon, yeah. fang, heart. Heart. Yeah. And the story takes place, well, the, the whole crux of it is the dragon, there were dragons. And... And the world was prosperous when there were dragons. And everybody was unified. It was all one happy, joyous place to live. For one reason or another, the dragons were dying off. I think they even sacrificed themselves for humanity or something. But they left behind a dragon, a piece of the heart. It's like a, it's not a real heart. It's a stone and that it protects and and it helps them prosper yep and then humans got greedy and they all parts of the country all five of the parts wanted to have ownership of this one stone and so they fought and killed and wars they eventually broke the stone by accident and and that is kind of where i'm gonna stop the story yeah that sets everything up so that yeah that's kind of the setup is they used to be unified now they're split into these five countries who are warring against each other raya and her father are from heart and she is her whole quest is to travel to each of these places and and try and get all of the pieces of that thing that broke apart so i'm a bit of a nerd i'm a DD guy i like writing stories i like i like quests and to me this felt like a amazing campaign oh yeah just a really fun story and you can tell that like we said earlier a lot of time effort and thought went into it and by the end, I was so happy with the choices they made. There was an, a moral, and I think I think we should talk about that a little. Can bit. we do that? Maybe. Why not? Let's play a little segment <laughs> okay. we got here. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. Moral number one, and the moral of today's story is. I'm gonna say work together because. Even more than that, trust each other. Ooh. Even when sometimes people haven't given you a reason to trust, yeah. which is a really hard lesson because once you've been burned, you're less likely to trust people. And what an important lesson it is for today's time. Oh, I mean, yeah. we got a lot of we, crazy we, stuff we, out we've in the We've got world. a lot of people who who don't trust each other, who who view each other as the enemy. And and a lot of that was happening in this story where these countries were were viewing each other as the enemy and it it was a we win or we lose kind of proposition. If if this other country wins, we lose. Yeah. But working together was Ah, it was so, like an almost that and even though I know who you are and you're in this opposing faction, we can still have a friendship and I can still trust you. Yeah. Even if I'm not sure what you're going to do. I don't know. It, it was just really like and I guess you kind of had to be there and you have to see this movie to really get that. Um, but yeah, it was a really, really beautiful message to get across and they got it across in a way that wasn't preachy. It was just part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So let's talk about the characters. We have Raya, we have Sisu, we have Bun, we have Namari, uh, and then Benji. Let's talk about those. Okay. So Raya, the story starts when she's like, what? 10 yeah maybe 11 maybe 12 like in that in that range somewhere she has a heart of gold i she's a a tough fighter she's uh got a good sense of humor she's friendly she's being raised by her father Mm -hmm. ba who is i think he's the clan chief 
Like yeah. he's the one running heart the yes. country. And he believes very strongly that all the countries should reunite. Yeah. And, and he believes in people. And then we got Sisu, who's voiced by Aquafina. This is, we won't spoil too much, but this is the last dragon. Yeah. And, well, we, and we, she is fantastic. <laughs> we, we see her in the trailer. Yeah. And yeah, she. She's I, funny, but not like comic relief funny. It's yeah. like she's part of the story and like she's a real like character she's not just that side character that throws out jokes the whole time well and that's what it was almost set up during the trailer it felt yeah like, it's almost like we don't know what to do with this character so we'll just put the jokes in the trailer but she was so much more than that yeah which was a, a pleasant surprise yeah and then we have bone bone bon? bone 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 bon? yeah that's the father yeah is it no i thought it was a little kid that had the boat Oh, I don't remember what his name was. Yeah. Um, and then Namari, who I think is that's the, the antagonist. The, the friend. Yes. Who is from Fang. And there's some trust issues there with this girl. Absolutely. And they have some pretty badass fights in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that Let's talk about them. So there were there are at least three fight scenes. They were so good. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were they were really well choreographed, well animated. It wasn't one of those where they like move the camera so fast that you can't see what's going on. Like it was a legit martial arts type fight scene. Well, and there's a weapon in here, and when you see it, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a weapon in here that is very creative. And just super badass. To me, that was just like, wow. How that was cool. cool that they conceived that and made that happen. The other thing I really liked is that each of the fight scenes had a different intention and emotion mm. behind it. Yeah. Like there was one towards the end where things had escalated to the point where it was like, I'm so angry at you and all hope is lost kind of fight scene. And the way they animated that captured all of that. It wasn't just, oh, great, here's another fight scene. Like sure. there was so much behind why they were fighting and they captured that. It was really good. Oh, yeah, it was it was very good. Um, let's talk about the animation. We kind of touched on it, but when it first started, I, I said, Andrea, is this 4K? I'm sure it is, but it, I mean, it looked amazing. Am it was I, crystal clear. Yeah, it from was. from an animation standpoint, I there's a point where you know there's the it's kind of what's that terrible movie with Tom Hanks and about the Polar Express? Yeah, <laughs> and it's where they make animation look too much like humans. The Uncanny it, Valley. The Uncanny Valley. Yeah, it's it too, and it's it, it, this, it's almost too close to reality where it's creepy. And the, that's like the trick is to find that point and not cross it because yeah. <laughs> then it like freaks people out. We're not there. We're <laughs> they're safely in a great place. Well, and it reminds me a lot of Moana, like the character figures, the art design. It, it really felt Moana esque. Um, Maybe better though. Oh yeah, yeah. But the the character design I thought was similar. Yeah. Um, then music, we didn't have a single song. It was not a musical. And I loved it. There it was great scoring underneath and kind of reinforced the, the setting that they were in, kind of that Southeast Asia type feel to it. Um, but yeah, great scoring, didn't overpower the rest of the movie, uh, but added to it, no songs. No songs. Okay, so let's just cut to the chase now. Is it worth it? $30, Disney Plus. It's coming out, what, in three or four months for free. Yeah. Is it worth to pay the $30? If you've got it, smoke if you got it. No. <laughs> smoke it if you got it. <laughs> no, no I, I mean, if you have $30 to spend, this is a great thing to spend it on 
if you've got a, a group of, I say older kids, I don't know that this is like a put your five year old in front of it. No, type absolutely of thing. not. No. Um, but yeah, I'd say older elementary and up, I think up to adult because we loved it. Um, so I, I think the whole family could enjoy this. I think it's worth it. Absolutely. I, I too, uh, think it's totally worth the $30. If, if it's just, even if it's just you treating yourself to this story is, is great. And maybe make a night of it, get some Chinese food. We got sushi, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, yeah, I love this movie. I, I can't sing its praises enough. There's I'm going to say there's a few things I want to go back and, and understand better. But there's not really a, a major problem with it. I had, I love the journey. I, yeah, it was and I, I think I would unequivo- unequivocally recommend it. Yeah, yeah. watch yeah. it. So uh, I will, <laughs> and this is fun, we... There is kind of not an Easter egg, but there's something in the credits that I think most people would even turn it off before they saw. Uh But there was a little paragraph explaining that this movie was made with over 400 computers at home. And they used a lot of Zoom meetings and even made fun of, you know, the people that... Hey, dude, your mic's not you're on. You're still on mute. Yeah, yeah. you're still on mute. <laughs> so, but yeah, just the this little paragraph saying this is groundbreaking that people were working from home during a pandemic and we've made this movie, which is even more incredible because it looked amazing. I think it's one of the best stories they put out in a long time. I'm going to say this has... A and proper they, home yeah. in Disney and should be there for a long time. And hopefully we can have Rhea as almost as known as one of the princesses. I think even though she's maybe not a princess, but technically like not properly. But I feel like she's in a category by herself. Like she's she's kind of the new wave of not. It's not like put on a pretty de- dress and dance with a prince kind of princess. She's like a kick butt, find yourself, learn life lessons, and, and better yourself kind of princess. She's like Elsa, kind ah, of. Yeah. So good. So, yeah, I'd put her in that category. Or Moana. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Andrea, I must ask, do you have any other point you would like our listeners to know before they watch this movie? I don't think so. Yeah, you? You know, I'm going to say enjoy it. I think it's it's definitely worth every penny. I loved it. I wish it made it to theaters. I would have, oh, can you imagine oh, seeing this on the big screen? It would have been awesome to see in theaters. Yeah. And maybe they'll re-release it once the pandemic winds down. And I would go pay to see it in theaters, too. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have a single problem with it. I loved it. So um, enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this special episode. I had fun doing this. Like Next time, though, we will get into Mulan. Oh, man. Yeah. Which, how appropriate is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great um, weekend. And, oh, 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 big Disney Plus Us news. We do have a YouTube channel, and it's, we're just dropping out some episodes on YouTube. And uh, subscribe. it's just the audio, though. It's, it's just, not like a video of us. No, talking. you don't get to see okay. us. But this is a good way to communicate. So if you want to send us a note, if you want to comment, if you want to tell us what you thought of Raya and the Last Dragon, Raya, Raya, <laughs> you say tomato. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a good one. <laughs>